Now, once back in Illustrator, we want to get that texture and bring it into Illustrator. So file, place, and we're gonna choose our gray texture, and boom, there it is. Check it out. The alpha channel is gone. I mean, by that I mean the white has disappeared. Now that's one of the cool things about using bitmaps in Illustrator. Now, another cool thing, another groovy thing about this is if we were to take our color and change the color to say purple, look what happens. It's pretty cool. Illustrator um, has some sort of dynamics with bitmaps and you can change the colors, which would be quite useful. But in this situation, we're gonna change it to white. And let's have a little look at that. That's not looking too bad there. We can move it around and sort of see how that's gonna work. Yeah, not too bad. But we're actually not gonna use it this way. We're gonna do it a different way. So let's undo that and get back to the black. Let's select our texture and cut it. Command X on a Mac. Control X on a PC. Now let's go to a fresh artboard so we can focus on this. We're gonna command paste, control paste on a PC. And we're gonna live trace this object. So let's go to object and live trace. And we're gonna make. And what we need to do before we expand this, we need to look at our setting above here and it's got minimum area and that's set to 10. What we want to do is just get this down to naught because what we'll find is that we'll have the maximum black data that is kept in there. So at the moment we're about to expand this live trace. So let's go to object, live trace and expand. Boom. Looking good. And we need to ungroup this object. So we're going to go to object and ungroup. And that's just split it into two, really. It's split the white from the black. Now, what we need to do next is quite tricky. So please have faith. <laughs> what we need to do is we need to get rid of this black here. So we're going to get our magic wand. And we're going to click on the black. Be careful not to click on the white. Let's get the black. Click it. And delete. Now, where's it gone? It's all gone. No, it hasn't. The white is still there, as you can see. There is the white. That is what we need. All that work in Photoshop was to acquire this white texture here. Now, it's this. this is where it becomes clear. This is where the... This is where the magic happens. So we're gonna click on this and we're gonna cut it. We're gonna come back to our object and what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over to the transparency panel and we're gonna click make opacity mask. There you go. Now when, when you click that, you'll notice that the shape disappears but you can see the data is still there. But if you look in our transparency panel, we've got two squares. We've got the image to the left and a black square to the right. You wanna make sure that you click on this black square. If you click on the left, you can see just about the outline. It'll show you what you've got selected. Click on the black square. Then we're gonna to go to edit and paste. And look what's happened. All of a sudden, we can see see our badge again. But this time, this time we've made we have made an opacity mask, and we can move we can move our texture around. And I'm going to rotate this a little bit just to make it a bit more interesting, and we can move the opacity mask around so we can can just see how we how we're liking that texture and position it somewhere. Nice, how's that looking? Okay, it's eating too much into the type there. How about if we pull this across? Not too bad, not too bad. Now, remember what I said about less is more? 
let's imagine if we'd left all that black data in there, it, you know, most of the badge would be cut up. I think this effect always works nice, I believe, when it's nice and discreet, when you've got some nice bits of nice little bits of grit and some nice big bits and there it is nicely cutting into our badge there. And now we're almost done. There's a few more steps to cover and then we're, we're there. So, right, keep an eye on your transparency panel and you want to click back into the left. And what you'll notice now is that we've got our shape and you, you can't really see the, the opacity mask anymore. But one thing I want to point out is that when we zoom in to our, our shape, let me click on it. You can still see that um, we're not free of that texture. You you can you can see the outline. So this isn't this isn't what we want. We want to free up that texture. So we're we are completely you know completely flat and, and completely free. So let's um, let's take the next step. So with that selected, we're going to go to object and click flat transparency. And when that happens, you're going to, uh, again, another menu is going to come up. And I think you, you might find that it'll be around 75. We want to push it as far right as possible, push it to a 100. And we're going to see what happens. It's going to flatten that. And what we need to do is it's, it, it's created like a box on the outside. Now, I don't know why it actually does this, but it's something you're going to have to deal with. Now, let's move over to our... Uh, selection tool, so our direct selection tool. We're going to click and drag and just grab that box. We're going to press delete and once again and we're free of that white box around the outside that it seems to create. Now let's zoom in again and this time you can see that we've got this whiteness. What we need to do is we need to get rid of that whiteness. So let's go to our magic wand, click on the whiteness and press delete and there you have it we are now free of that whiteness so let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at our shape so let's move our mouse but what you'll find is it is it's expanded the object but all this all these pink areas are sort of separate we want to group all that so we're going to do one final thing we're going to select the whole object we're going to come over to the pathfinder we're going to click on that and then click make compound shape and then it's one last click on expand and we are done and that is looking great let's move our mouse over it and you can see now that illustrator is treating it as a singular object all flat one layer no nonsense just how I like it nice and simple let's change this to say purple let's have a look at this let's go to another artboard where I've prepared a yellow block and we can see that it's it's perfect it's a perfect object and it is ready to roll well I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope you found the techniques that we covered here useful in your design well I think that just about wraps it up so get stuck in guys, and I'll see you next time. Nice one.